Welcome to this brand new project. We're going to be creating this badge style logo. These were super popular a few years ago and they're still pretty cool, I think, um, and definitely have a place in graphic design and branding. And so I have our artboard set up. All of this is actually created right within Photoshop. So you don't need any assets for this, which is pretty cool. And I want to show you a technique that might help you if you are uh, trying to sort of not copy, but replicate a style or a different graphic. So if I am using artboards, I can actually um, go ahead and let's convert artboard one to a smart object. So I want to actually make everything in artboard one, one layer. So I'm going to select all the layers in artboard one, right click, holding the option key down, choose merge layers. And that's going to create a new merged layer. And this is just our logo. And now I'm going to put it over in artboard two. Then I'm just going to drop the opacity, something like 25 and lock it in place. I am going to add a black background to this and put it underneath our shape layer. But now we have this logo that we can kind of add stuff create our own logo on top of let's actually drop the opacity to 10 so it's you can barely see it and lock it so the next thing i'm going to really do with this is just add my own text now i'm going to recreate this this is a fake bakery that someday i'm going to start i'm super into baking getting really really into it now and so i'm going to just recreate my own logo but you can, I want you to create a logo or a badge for something you're passionate about. It could be a business of yours, an, a business idea, or just something completely fun, your family name or something like that. I'll do it with a different font so that you can follow along um, if you don't have the font that I used in this project. So I'm just going to use Open Sans. And let's just get going. First thing first, I'm going to just lay out all my text. So I'm just going to type everything. Everything's going to be all caps. So let's just set our character settings to all caps, please. All caps, there we go. Communion, I thought was a great name for a bakery. I love this idea of breaking bread together. It does come from my roots as uh, being Catholic and growing up Catholic and sharing bread, breaking bread, having communion every week. So anyways, let's just continue with our text. You can add whatever you want. Fresh bread. I made sourdough bread for the first time recently. I usually make like just like a sort of a typical Dutch oven bread. It's a very easy recipe for anyone who wants to get into baking fresh bread and it tastes so good so much better than what you would get from the grocery store but i've moved up in the world of baking and am doing uh, sourdough bread now so i want to make sure these are aligned they are and all this text is the same size except for our communion logo right so i think that's important now, this established 2025, this was literally just me putting spaces between each line. Now, you'll notice, though, I what I was doing is typing, press return, S, return, T, return, D. The reason is because the line spacing is so low. So let's increase this, something like that. And this is left aligned. Yep, so that looks good. Maybe a little bit more space. You're probably like, Phil, why are you teaching us this stuff? We know how to do this. It's true. You know how to do so much. But we got to get this text on here, and then we'll do the fun stuff. 2025. I think that's a pretty good goal. Who knows? Maybe this class will still be up in 2025, and <laughs> people will be learning Photoshop, and they'll look at my website and say, oh, Phil doesn't teach online anymore. He just bakes bread now. <laughs> Awesome, so now let's just start creating these lines. Now there's different ways to do these shapes. Um, we've seen a couple different options in the past. We have our pen tool, curvature pen tool. You don't want to use the line tool. And the reason is because you don't have all the options for curving, 
uh, and, and things like that with the line tool. So I am going to use our pen tool for some, our straight lines like these ones. So I'm just going to click and then click. Now a fun sort of thing to note, and let's turn off our fill, our stroke we're gonna turn on. We'll, we might change the colors, but a fun thing to note about the uh, pen tool is if you hold the shift button down when you're clicking, it helps to keep it perfectly level. So now I'm done with this shape, so I'm going to just command click off of this layer. So that's another fun trick is if you click and then again hold shift so that it's perfectly level because if you're not holding shift down and you're like trying to get it level, you can see that it's not perfect. But when you're done, you just command click and click off of that shape. So instead of recreating this shape, I'm just going to copy this one. So holding the option key, dragging it down. And then now I'm going to select both of these layers, those two, and then click and drag with the option key. And we're gonna drag over here, okay. So that's pretty good. Now it might be a good idea to center this text to these lines. And you can see when I drag this over to the right, oop, that line, vertical line pops up. And that's how you know that it's going to be vertical or centered to these lines right here. Where is that line? That one is to something else. There we go, there's centered. So you see all these lines pop, Po popping up because it's trying to center to other things too, like maybe the edge of this text layer and things like that. So you might need to turn off some of these other layers if you're using that method of trying to get um, to of trying to center layers to each other. All right, so let's go easiest to hardest. So we're gonna just create these these round edges. I thought this kind of looked like uh, loaves of bread a loaf of bread even though we have a mini loaf in the middle. So this is just gonna be two points like so. And then with my, oh, let's turn our fill off and our stroke on. We're keeping the stroke on the same width and color as the other shapes because we want the stroke to match. And then just taking our handles, I'm holding the command button down. We just kind of bend that to look good. That looks pretty good. Then we're going to create a new one down below. Whoops, option or command click to create a new layer. And click and drag, and then click and drag. And now holding the command key again, we can adjust our handles. That's looking pretty good. Now we can move these around until, you know, maybe we want them down a little bit more for this one. Rotate. Now what I wanna do is copy these to the other side. Pretty easy, right? All right, so let's just select these two. Option click, whoops, make sure you're option clicking the line. Holding the shift button down, I'm holding the shift button while I'm option clicking. Oops, and I didn't select both of these layers. So let's go ahead and select both of these layers. Which ones are they? Again, it would be best to stay organized, select both of these, option clicking to copy, and also shift, holding the shift button to lock it to that, that um, horizontal or vertical line. And then clicking the edge, rotating with the shift button. Now that's not going to be a perfect, that's not gonna be a perfect flip, right? Because it's actually sort of a mirror from the bottom, I rotate it. So a better way of doing this would be to flip it. Uh, so if we select both of these, go to Edit, Transform, Flip, Vertical, and then we rotate. Now that's a perfect match, symmetrical match to these lines over on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? All right, okay, next. What should we tackle next? What should we tackle next? All right, let's do this. Uh, hmm, let's do this loaf of bread. That seems pretty easy, actually. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. 
Okay, now we're gonna use the curvature tool with this one. So we're gonna click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, and then close it off. And these two, we're gonna double click the bottom two lines because we want it to be a sharp edge. And let's go back to our stroke. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now we have our loaf. Let's create a couple more lines. So really with any of these tools, we'll just take the pen tool, draw this line down the middle. And then it probably makes sense to add these to the same layer. So I'm creating these on all new layers, but it might be better just to com set the setting to combine on a layer, so combine shapes. So now we can just Command click to create a new shape. Command shift. And these are all going to be added to this, this same layer instead of having a ton of different layers for the loaf of bread. And then your loaf of bread just ends up being one layer. So I'm going a little bit creative compared to what I did before. And notice I'm not just copying and pasting these lines, which you could do but I like it being a little bit more organic. All right, we're working towards it, we're working towards it. All right, let's take our curvature tool, which is what we're going to use for all of these other shapes. So let's go bottom to top, <laughs> because the top one is hard. So let's actually zoom in here just a little bit. So with our curvature tool, let's add this just at the top. We're going to set our fill to the color and, or the stroke to the color. All right, so these are going to be sharp edges. So double click, double click, double click. Go back over here, double click, double click, double click, and then du double click there. Now notice the edges of our shape are now sharp. So to adjust that, we go into our stroke settings, go to corners and round them out. Okay, so that's just in your stroke setting. Now this little shape right here, this is just a triangle. We can do that custom or we can go to our polygon tool, three sides and just rotate it and hold the shift button down to lock it so it's perpendicular or up and down, at least that one side. And again, we're gonna change our corners to round. We're just gonna copy that shape and move it over here and rotate it, holding the shift button down so it locks it to there. So let's see, that looks pretty good. All right, let me move it in just an in a little squish. All right, next we have this rolling pin right here. So again, with our curvature tool up here, just start at the top, we're going to start at this corner, double click, we're gonna go all the way over here, double click, down just a little bit, click once at the end, double click down here, double click, double click, double click, click once for a curve up there, double click in there, and then finish with the double click. Now we need to go into the these points on the end. So we're going to bring out Oops, these handles, like so. Maybe the handles on the inside as well. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we want this to go behind our bakery text. So we're gonna put this a little bit down and then let's just put it in our layer panel behind our bakery text, which is, and again, you want to be renaming all of this stuff, okay? So that you are organized, but I don't wanna waste my time or your time doing that. All right, so now I want to actually just add a quick black shape 
a black rectangle behind the bakery text. Oops, I don't want that to be selected though. Let's undo, click off of that text, click our shape tool, turn off our stroke, add a black fill, and then we're just going to create this black rectangle and put this behind the bakery between the rolling pin layer and the bakery text. So now that's just a quick way to create that sort of spacing around the, around the text like that. All right, last thing, we got this cool chef hat. All right, so let's go at the top. We're gonna take our curvature tool again. This is gonna be a fun one. All right, so let's just create this swirly gig at the top. So we're just going to click, click, click. Whoops, we got the pen tool. We want automatic curves, so click. Again, it's kind of just at the apex. So the circle has basically four apexes and we're gonna change our fill to black or to nothing and our stroke to yellow so we can see what we're doing. Mm, yeah, so I'm just going to click here, click here. We'll fix this in a second. Click here, outside, and then there. All right, now let's go to our pen tool. Let's play with the apex. I'm going to actually twist this around like so. Is that what we want? No, that's not what we want. We want to twist these bottom ones. So with the pen tool, select that one, option or control click it, control click it to get the handles. And we're just going to rotate and spread it out. Now go to this next one, control click it, rotate and bring it out. Now this top one, we might want to bring out just a little bit That looks pretty good. You could play around with it, perfect it if you want. We're gonna take our curvature tool. Actually, let's just use our pen tool. Click here, click here with a little bit of a curve. Click here with a little bit of a curve and click up. Change our fill and stroke. Now we can go in to our settings like that with a command key. We're just going to create a new shape right here. Click and drag, click and drag. With the control button, just adjust those handles. Control click to create a new shape. Click, click, control click, 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 control click, click, click. So what you would want to do is go through, select all the layers for this chef hat, either group them, merge them, create them, put them all in one shape so you can easily move that around. Of course, rename everything. I think I changed some of the colors over here. So let's actually change the color. Let's go. It'll be easier for now if we just select our shapes here and our outer little bread loaf parentheses whatever you want to call it and now let's change the color to something else i think that's pretty cool may a little bit brighter but i think you get the point i hope you've had fun following this project i know these projects are a little bit longer but i think at least when i was learning photoshop i loved just following along with other people and kind of seeing their process so i really hope that following my process has helped you i would love to see your badges this is a project i would really 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 love if you shared it's a great visual project to share on social media as well so post it to social instagram facebook tag me in there at phil ebner and at Video School Online. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next lesson.